seeking first the kingdom of heaven, and all else shall be added unto you. It says, the kingdom of heaven is found within. Go ye deep within to that still small voice and listen. So listen to your still small voice and ask, what would the kingdom of heaven look like to me? And in the next minute and a half, just deeply, deeply receive that. Just receive the answer to that question. What would the kingdom of heaven look like to me if all things were equally possible and any reality could equally be? What would the kingdom of heaven look like to me physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually starting now? a minute and a half. Imagine what would the kingdom of heaven look like to me. Now, if you're in the male incarnation, the answer to that question will be proactive. You'll you'll definitely get visuals and feelings of what the kingdom of heaven would look like to you if it manifested here on earth. If you're in the female incarnation right now, you'll receive it. It will be kind of reactive. In other words, when you ask, what would the kingdom of heaven feel like, look like to me, it will come in as as an informational uh, download. But if you're in the male body, probably it will manifest as something you actually create. So just pay attention to the answer, to what would it look like and feel like, smell like, taste like. For the kingdom of heaven, for me to manifest in my day-to-day life, my day-to-day experience, what would it look like? What would it smell like, sound like, feel like? If if we on this call can hold each and every one of us a visual image, at least, and for those of us who can do it, imagine it with sounds and feelings, smells, and taste of heaven on earth for five minutes. This thing that Cobra's trying to do and a lot of people are trying to do with these mass meditations, I think we could tip the scale. So 
since this is the anniversary of 9-11, please, the 13th. You know, sky, skyscrapers won't even have a 13th floor because of all the superstition around it. This is the 13th anniversary of 9-11. Because of 9-11, millions of people have lost their lives. Trillions of dollars have been spent that could have brought the world out of poverty and starvation. On this anniversary, if those of us on this call can use lifetimes on the spiritual path to envision for five minutes the world as you would like to see it, feel it, hear it, touch it, taste it, smell it. I think we will look back on this night and say, yes, I showed up, I did my part. After lifetimes of studying in the occult arts, the spiritual paths, on a critical juncture, I was able for five minutes to take control of my mind and my attention and create what I really want to create from my heart and my innocence and my purity. So guys, um, we're still in the influence of the full moon. There has been a number of anomalies with the sun. Stuff is a going on, folks. Buck Minister Fuller said if 5.28 people can go into enlightenment, it would save the world. That's the hurts of love. It, you know, everything has a hurts. It's a measurement thing. The Bible says one good man can save a city of 10,000 and 10 can save the world. So somewhere between 10 and 5.28 people we can save the world. And there's more than 10 people on this call right now. So let's give it the college try. The privacy of our own homes, the word that we're listening. And for five minutes, do whatever you have to do to keep your mind under your own conscious control to visualize and create and imagine what heaven on earth would look like for you, sound like for you, taste, feel like for you as an innocent child, pure, vulnerable, Starting now.
Be patient with yourself. Be loving, compassionate with yourself. Relax. Just keep bringing your mind back to visualizing what you would want reality to be if you were an innocent, vulnerable child, human or animal, what you would want it to feel like, smell like, look like. Taste, touch, everything. The kindness, the touching, the beauty. The wonderful, happy voices of beautiful music. The calling of birds. The sounds of happy animals. Just dwell in the memory and the dream, the sacred rainbow dream of why you came here into physical embodiment, what you came to dream awake as an innocent child, what you wished your mother and father could have been like, what you wished your home had been like. What you wished the neighbors and the surrounding areas had been like. In terms of visual beauty, audible beauty, olfactory beauty, sensual beauty, Pure touching, imagine that. People who touch each other but with clarity and perfect purity and divinity. Dream away of memories of what you know in your heart is possible for life to be like, for yourself and for everything. Happiness, beauty, love, grace and mercy, wisdom, courage, excitement, enthusiasm, Feelings of oneness and unity. Dream away for a few more minutes of what it would be like if everything were perfect for you and for everyone you love and all the little children. Dream right now on this anniversary of 9-11. Let us dream this dream awake. Now, as you're doing this, go back through all your ancestral lines, all your ancestors back infinitely, and bless them with a sacred dream. See their sacred dreams being dreamed away. Imagine it. Don't worry about it. 
just imagine. The imagination is the pineal gland. The pineal gland is the master gland that produces the psychoactive chemicals into the bloodstream that allow us to experience the messiahship that each and every one of us came in to do. Control your own imagination and imagine what you want. And that is the control module. That is the computer code. You imagine what you want clearly and you command it to be. And because we really, 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 really really, 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 really are one, it does go out. And be the light, putting out the correct computer codes. And what are the computer codes? Obviously, the most primary computer code is love. So whatever visualization that you're visualizing of heaven on earth, I want you now to love it. That's the fuel that will make it be born. Love what you've been visualizing. Love it from your heart. Starting now. Get out of your head. Go into your heart. Feel love and love what you just created. Deeply. And love yourself for creating it. And love to be everything that is for allowing it to be. that will give it life to love. And what I would do as you're loving what you've created is to put a, um, a stipulation in there that this creation that you've just made through visualization and now through loving it but just giving it life Grow according to the law of one, because everything grows, changes. And just say, be this creation that I visualized, and be loved, but be and be loved in the way that is the highest good of all concerned. Because we really are all one being. And when one is harmed, all are harmed. And when one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am and who you are and who we all are, one with all there is, we all ask that only the highest good of all concerned happen continually through all changes and we give thanks that this is done so be it just sit with that visualize it and feel it for about a minute and a half
Now we're doing great. Oh my God. And add anything you want to add to this. Trust yourself, trust your divinity. Forgive yourself for anything real or imagined. Forgive your parents. Forgive your ancestry and just go into full-blown directorship of creating the most tender, beautiful, exquisitely satisfying reality in your imagination for yourself personally and for everyone else. Because, y'all, this is a winding time. This is a very, very powerful time. And what we're doing tonight in these exercises is what we came to do. Just go into your inner child who you are as a little child and try to find a place where you're not in screaming pain, where you actually feel good and your heart is open and you can feel joy. And just pretend, I know I'm being repetitive here, but it's this reason. And just pretend Someone gave you a magic pill or button and they say you can change reality for everyone, for yourself and everyone. Just push this button, but just imagine what it is you really, really want for all the little kittens and doggies and little girls and little boys and the trees and the birds and just how you feel when you wake up in the morning and how happy you are. And if you need help with this, ask the angels and your divine self to give you the vision of splendor. Splendor of your physical body and your physical world, splendor of your emotions, splendor of your thoughts and splendor of your desires starting now for a minute and a half. And the assignment for tonight is this. Oops, somebody, hold on a second. Marion, take it over for a minute. I'll be right back. The assignment is for the next week to spend five minutes a day 
imagining the world that you want. Let me see what the dogs are barking at. I'll be back. Marianne, take it over for a bit. Okay. Wow. Um, thank you, Cynthia. I know still people are in meditation. And that was absolutely beautiful. And, and uh, yes, five minutes a day. That's, that's all it takes. Five minutes a day. To create our world and to create the world within and the world outside and uh, create it to the highest good of all concern also. And uh, it's as easy as that. Absolutely. And we are all artists. And uh, artists have a vision, and they bring that vision forward, and they touch so many people, and that is their job, and you may not, you may think you're not an artist, but you're painting a beautiful picture, and uh, that picture works with everyone's picture and it's just creating it's creating paradise on earth so i want to thank everyone that uh, i know that was long but it was good and it was in preparation of these energies coming for us. It wound in with everything we've listened to so far. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We're up to the seventh dimension, everybody, <laughs> on this call. How are you guys feeling? Lily, I hate to bring you out of it. That was it right there. That's who we are. What was your experience? I can't hear you, Lily, if you're there. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. That was good. (laughs) yeah beautiful we're right on I didn't mean it to be that long but it was meant to be yeah yeah I would say so it was meant to be we're on a marathon call I think the biggest marathon call we've been on in the diamonds but that's okay if you have to go you can come back later but I'm bound and determined. I know our next, this week, last week, and the week before, and probably next week, our preparation time. Uh, next week will be our last preparation time because it's one day before the the big energy comes in. There's energy now, but this is going to be a big boost. So I hope us that listen now and to the archives, uh, these calls, I think will look back and very much appreciate that we were able to prepare together because we're going to have a fantastic time riding the wave. And it's perfect that Frank will be coming in 21, 21, seven days, oh, seven days, seven days later after we've seen uh, uh, and experienced some of that energy so we can ask him questions to keep adjusting our preparation through it, throughout it. Whew. Okay. Let me open the room. Let's see if there's anybody 
if you want to share your experiences through this or any questions or comments. And then we have Franco coming up and uh, giving details of this wave, which now we'll understand a lot more from what he says because we've built the foundation thus far on this call and before it, everybody that has built their knowledge up and understanding and wisdom. Okay, guys, if you want to star six and come in, any comments, anything you experienced, <clears throat> you're welcome to come in. Just push, push the star button and then six on your phone. Well, I'm, may I add um, what I've noticed? Um, I, I, I don't know if it's my imagination, but I don't. I don't feel all of the, I don't feel like I've been beat up all night long and bruised. I feel like that, some of that's gone. Glory. It I is gone. I if, yeah, if that, it had to have been from this, but until we did this, it was just, I just felt like somebody beat me all night long and I don't feel that, that soreness as much as I did. So, thank you. That's interesting. Wow. So what you just experienced is you uh, you mm -hmm. experienced those denser energies and you mm -hmm. took in the lighter energies and the lighter energies readjusted you back to the less denser energies. You can believe I'm going to be doing this every day because I could, yeah, this is a very... I, I used to do this, meditate, and I've been very bad, but this was very good. It was very... In fact, I wondered, oh, this is... You know how your negative side wants to say, oh, this will probably not really work? And I knew better because I used to do it, but wow, it's amazing the difference that I'm feeling. It's amazing, yeah. So oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning a lot from what you're saying because I've never gone to where you're going. And there's a lot of learning in what you're offering through the meditation. I'm here, guys. Here. Hold on. Uh, is, is, is there anybody? Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else want to share? Or Lily? Uh, just let me bring this other audio up really quick and just take over the helm. Is that okay? Sure. About sure. two, three minutes probably. Come on in, guys. If you have any experiences, share with us or questions or comments. We're all helped by it. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, how was your experience? Um, it went well. Um, it was maybe a little bit, um, when she mentioned the heaven on earth, it reminded me of the pictures I used to see when I went to church as a child. But So that kind of blended in with it, but they were pretty pictures, you know, people with lions and lambs and things, you know, right next to each other, so uh, lots of animals, and then at the very end, it was a nice, uh, kind of like um, breezy open bed or house, you know, like you would see in the Caribbean or something, hmm. you yeah. know which are always nice. I always enjoy seeing pictures of those. And a waterfall, you know, and animals, of course. Mm -hmm. Lots of birds. Mm. 
That was very nice. Thank you. Is that Heather I heard? Yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you for your experience. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Yeah. What will be awesome. interesting is in the next week to see how our week goes in terms of, you know, mm-hmm. is it going to be more energetic balanced? And if it isn't, then are we responding to it differently based on our, you know, experience on the call? Yeah. We create right. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, after this whole call, you know, the encouragement of 9-11, I'm going to hear one more thing. Uh, on this show that you just listened to, the meditation, the next day, this was the day before, this is 9-10. The next day, here's my experience, what you just said, Lily, of listening to something and increasing in your frequency. I listened to this call with the meditation we just heard and the other, all the other stuff. The next morning was 9-11. I woke up. I looked on my phone. I opened up my phone, getting ready to go to work. The time was 9-11 a.m. on 9-11. Okay, so that day I went to work, and then I thought, oh, I went to the bank to change to, I just do this once in a while, to to cancel both my checking accounts, make new ones. Little do I know, you know, I'm, I'm off the system, so I didn't renew my driver's license for a year and two months. Yeah, driving along for a whole year and not getting stopped because I know I'm not going to. I'm out of that. And so anyway, I had to show her my ID. She saw that my ID was expired and she wouldn't let me open up the new account until I got a new ID. So I was actually forced and I got to give her a witness and testimony of the world changes going on. I gave her a couple things to Google, like the bank at the bank. She's a bank teller. The boss there, Google the Titanic and how it didn't go down by a wreck. It went down by purp- on purpose because some big rich bankers were going to uh, whistle blow and let the world know about the shadow government. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So I left there thinking, okay, I was just going to be gone from work for half an hour, an hour. I went to, to the close driver's DMV. They don't do it there. Here's the list to go. So I drove 15 miles to go to a DMV to get my driver's uh, reinstated driver's license. They were closed because of water main break. I drove another 18 miles across town the opposite direction to go to the DMV. Because it was expired for more than a year, it was like a year and two months or a month, I had to take the written test. So I went to take the written test without studying, they give you a little card to go to which number machine. They gave me number 11. <laughs> I said that. Oh. I can't hear anybody. Did we lose Elizabeth? I think we did. She'll probably pop. She'll probably pop back on. Mhm. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. (laughs) Yes. I dropped. All right. So, did you hear it all up until now? Until I stopped, dropped. Up until it was eleven. You were at the machine number eleven. Yeah, so they gave me that. I took the test. I I flunked the test by one question, of course. So I had to come back the next day. Well, by then, I left at about, I, I, and then when, before I left work, I looked at my clock. It was like one eleven, And then I left. And then I didn't get back to work till 4.30, 4.30 something. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, so I went the next morning to take the test, and... They gave me the number 13, which is Diamonds Forever 31. Well, 13 is Christ Consciousness. And then the opposite way of the number is 31, which is like a Christ, a warrior for God, or whatever. Uh, and then today I saw 11. What was that, Lily? I saw 11 today. Anyway, so if you heard what Cynthia talked about, 9-11, uh, when something bad, bad happens, the opposite repercussion comes back and act, 
to that magnitude, goodness happens. You know, 9-11, right? The badness. Well, and this is proven quantum physics and all that. The goodness is coming back. And actually, if you know, 9-11 was the day that they were going to announce Nasser and all that, and the White Knights had the build, its office in, I think, Building 7 that went down. And all, there's a lot to it. So, and when 9-11 happened, I turned on my TV to go to work. I never do that. I saw the second plane going into the building and literally got a smile on my face. I was thanking myself, what the heck are you smiling for? And I felt joy. So I think it was my higher self telling me, knows the future, saying, you know, and what I literally thought at that moment was, oh, my God, it's really started. I wasn't awake at all then. I didn't know any of this stuff. Uh, I just felt joy, and I just knew that something major was going on. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, May I add that when you said uh, seeing 11, I've seen 11, 11 a lot for years. I, it's just a constant thing. But in the last couple, two, three weeks, I see 11, 11, I would say every day. Oh, oh my, my God. God. I, I happen to look up every day, whether it's in the morning or the night. I see 11, 11 every day, every day in the last couple weeks. Normally you'll see it now and then, like once a week or once every two weeks, or all of a sudden you'll look up and, oh, 11-11. It's been every day. So we got to find out what that number means, 11. Be really curious to find that out. I do know a couple years ago if you added your age with the year you were born, it came out to 11, Literally, or I can one tell one. you that there there is a book written by eleven eleven, the doorway to the future. Say that again. Eleven eleven, the doorway to the future, is a book. I had the what? book. My grandson was born eleven eleven at eleven eleven. Wow! <laughs> Glory. Uh, but, but it is a book. A doorway to the future. That makes sense. The doorway to the golden age is opened. Mm-hmm. And it went wide open on 9-11 this year. Mm-hmm. And wow. and now we're going to get the effects of that. N- now we're going to get the finishing up of it, of our letting go with these two boosts of this energy. And we're then, it's like a sweeping, a sweeping out of the house, the last couple sweeps. And the dust is cleared and it's pure, clean and, and we're ready to roll, you guys. Wow. And then... May I ask another question because you guys are so on this and I'm having things that are weirder. It just dawned on me when I was sitting here. This morning when I woke up, um, my eyes were still closed and I could see it was coming in like in kind of a wave and it was coming into my, out of my brain it felt like and it was like this, um, clouds and they were kind of like grays and the fluffiness of the clouds and they were kind of coming toward my eyes and they just would move away. And so mm-hmm. it happened a couple of times and it was like, but you almost want to think like it could be bright, but it wasn't because it was more in the gray tones. And I thought, and by the third time I did that, I thought, what is that? And it never, it never kind of went into my eyes. It just kind of stopped above my eyes. I bet it happened seven times and it just kind of came in a wave at me. And then it just kind of went away. It didn't go down into my eye. I don't know where it went. And it did that like seven times. And I could see it was like, now I've seen gold before, prisms of gold where the gold thing goes, you know, like the kaleidoscopes of gold. Right. I've seen that. But this was just kind of gray. And it was fluffy like clouds. And it was coming out of the brain area. But it felt like I could see. Okay, my third eye was probably seeing it. I was and, just going to say, congratulations, your third eye is opening up. Was, but I don't know what I was seeing with that because of the color and the fluffing up of the clouds and it, and it came at me about seven times and I didn't have any idea what it meant. I just was noticing that it didn't hurt or anything. It was just kept coming to me. If, if anybody has any idea what that might have been, I don't know, but it was definitely something that called my attention to it. Well, my opinion, and then anybody else can chime in, I say congratulations, your third eye is opening. I've listened to Teal Scott, Teal Swan, a lot of, and others. What happens first when your 
third eye is opening, you start seeing waves of energy, waves and, and yeah. Okay, that explains that. That would be like more what it was like, like more of a wave of, yeah, of energy. So that would... as you can see, yes, you're awakening and you're going to these, you're, you're being drawn to places to help increase your vibration and energy, but you can see so everybody can relax. This, like Franco says, is happening naturally. It's happening naturally. Our third eye is natural. It's a supernatural part of us. It's our pineal gland. It's our mm-hmm. telekinesis, our telepathy, our levitating, our everything. We are the technology. We are bigger and stronger and beyond a computer. <laughs> Congratulations. Awesome. Anybody else want to chime in? Even if you've thought the opposite of what I said, bring it in because it's a part of it. I have something to add to that. This is Lily. Um, there is a on YouTube by uh, if you Google YouTube and then Google Santos Bonacci and look for the Christ Within video. Yes. I okay. Okay, he talks about how the map of the body is like the Bible. And he talks about the flow of the spinal fluid, which might have been the wave, how it goes up the spine, and then it goes through the, uh, I think there's something to do with 24 or 12. And then you have your pituitary and your pineal one represents Joseph and the other is Mary. It's really super interesting how he describes it and he shows the anatomy of the body and there is this oil that is released and secreted. And it is an absolute, when you watch that, it's just, you're, I was awestruck. I, I was just, oh my gosh. I, I, I And I'm, to this day, I want to experience that where you know it's happening. And it, what it does in your third eye opens. But I can't remember if it's the pineal. Okay, there's the pineal. There's one other thing. Pituitary. Okay, there's the, the oil, pineal gland. The oil you're talking about is the melatonin that Cynthia talked about. Melatonin is a chem, is a a chemical in our body that's released during the nighttime in, and when we're thinking of love and joy and our vibrations and we're going back to our natural state. Melatonin yeah, is a supernatural oil that helps us become supernatural. Again, our DNA, our latent DNA, 12 strands, we only had three strands on. As of now, 26 years before back, it started turning, our latent DNA started turning on. So that melatonin. Well, and for every human, you know, for everybody, we're, we have this cycle within our body. And every, I believe it's every 20 days we go through this cycle. So each month we have this opportunity that it takes place. According Throughout. to Cynthia, every 90 minutes we have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic body systems that we both have. One's like living in this world and the other one's like living in the dream world, which is the real world when we're dreaming. And what do you do when you dream? You know, you fly, you float, you go through walls. Yeah. Um, I have a, go ahead. I think I forgot what it was. I was going to ask you a question. I, I was getting that thing with Sanchos and saving it, so I didn't forget it, and then I was forgetting. You just said something, and I was going to ask a question about it. Sure. You'll remember. I can't. I'll remember. Go ahead. Uh, there's another person. Who is that other person, Lily, that Bonacci and Kate Gaia, they know him. His name is Bill Meyer or something. He's from the Christian realm, and he goes by the Bible, but he talks about our body and the pineal gland and, you know, all the Bible stories are in our body. Is yeah. it Bill O'Donnell? Yes. What's his O'Donnell. name again? Is it O'Donnell? I don't know. He's an older guy. He has a bunch of YouTubes. Bill Meyer, Bill somebody. We can find him later, but he's really good too with Bonacci stuff. Yeah, wow. Hmm. Okay, let me just play this. It's like, no, I promise. 
two, three minutes. It's me on the same call at, bringing in, because at the same time, here's another synchronicity. I was on Facebook with a gal I talked with who was talking about President Obama who recently went to uh, Stonehenge. You remember that, guys, about a week or so ago? Stonehenge? And that's a sign and a wonder. And uh, so I asked Cynthia about that. Stonehenge Obama and what is really Stonehenge and I know from and I explained it in the thing so my experience I know somebody personally that went there and actually Stonehenge was used by the contrasters the bad guys in a spiritual connotation to put the financial system into their propaganda machine matrix and we're coming out of that now and that person went and it got released all the way from Stonehenge all the way up to the sun through the sun and to universes that got that I'll just say that curse got broken and it and then then we got Stonehenge back for the good energies the lighter energies the God energies Christ energies and uh, and so I asked Cynthia that question she looked into it we can look into things too with our third eye this is what we do you just go there. You just imagine it, and you go there. You see visions, hear voices, and people, our friends, our brothers, sisters, tell us about things. And this is what she did. She literally looked into that. You guys want to hear that? It's like three, four minutes. Yeah. Okay. So everybody star six, and I'll play it, and we'll come back in. Just loving yourself instead of criticizing yourself. It's like two minutes away here. I can't. It just works better. And that I call common sense. It's just common sense to do that which works well. Marianne, I'm going to turn it over to you. Our time is pretty. I know that we can possibly go on longer. I'll leave that up to you and the other people. If not, oops, sorry. Here we go. I'll let you call the shots here. So back to you, girl. Uh, it is getting late. I'll open it up, though, for uh, people to thank you um, or even to comment. But um, just a quick note here. Uh, I, I say the law warning quite a few times throughout the day and it, it just seems like it's running in the back and it just has helped to make so much it, it it's helped to make my life smooth and and my relationships smooth. So um and I've seen it with other people with my friends and uh my friend's surgery went well, my Ellie's life has totally changed around and uh, a, a lot of other of my friends, their lives have changed and and for the better. And I mean, it's it has just smoothed their lives out and 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 made it made it more happy, happier. And that's definitely what it's all about. And so, um, thank you, Cynthia, for just keep bringing it through and and telling people and. Of course, people are using it now, of course. But I'm going to open the line up uh, for people to to say thank you and to... Uh, Did we lose her again? I think we lost her again. again. Yeah. Yeah. In the the middle middle of the sentence. sentence. And I'm giving reverberation. Yes, Yes, you are. are. How are are you? you? (laughs) I am well. Maybe, Maybe we, we had, had to give you this point. Point. Possibly. Were you the, the one that mentioned the numbers or the, 
the cloud and the cloud. Yeah, were you the one that mentioned the cloud? I was mentioning that I was seeing things that kind of look like cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I kind of. Since she's gone, gone, I kind of missed that that story. story. So would you mind mind telling it one more time? Oh, um, I just just woke up this morning, morning, and it's the first first time I've ever ever experienced it, it. but But I I just could could see something coming out like out of my forehead, and it looked like a grayish color, but they were fluffy like clouds. And it kept happening. And it would not go really any farther than my eye. It didn't go to my eye. It went like what we were discussing, the third eye. And it happened like seven times, and then it just stopped. But it was kind of like in a way that it came at me to my third eye, and then it just kind of disintegrated, I guess. It's just kind of weird, but it didn't hurt. Don't know what it was. Right. And Were they, they all gray? gray? Yeah, yeah, just, just the same color. color. They, they just, just look, look like, like um, you, you know, know kind of like some kind of gray rolling clouds. They, they didn't have, have a lot of color to them. them. And it, it, it just because they were fluffy, and, and it just came toward my third eye, eye, and then. Uh, they, they go, go just, just away. away. I've, I've never, never seen, seen it before. before. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe kind of laugh because I was like, it like, didn't even get shaken, shaken the dust off. off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We well, you know, know what? what? That's, That's what I was hoping for, for was you know, an answer like something like, like that. that. That somebody mm-hmm. didn't, didn't would it experience it or be able, able to tell me what. I'm experiencing. Yeah. Because, because once, once I get, get back, back into this, I start opening up very quickly and, and doing things, but I don't know what I mean. Right. 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 When, when I was, was falling asleep, asleep the other, other night, a lot, a lot of things, things were going on, on but I was, was kind of lucid dreaming, and, and I felt my crown chakra open up, like, because it was pouring, pouring out, out everywhere. everywhere. Wow. wow. That, that was the first time that had happened. And it, what did it feel like? Like, like tingly. Oh. Okay. Um, I, didn't I didn't really feel, feel pressure, but I was kind of... of my body, body was kind of numb at the same time. time. You know, because, uh, I don't know, when you start to fall asleep, your body just stops moving and mm-hmm. or mine does. It just, like, kind of goes comatose. And it's hard for me to get my limbs moving sometimes. Yeah. Wow. Well, really, are going to be a lot of changes in, you know, sometimes you wonder, is it real? But is it really in it? Yeah. 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 And that's not come back on. Was there was anybody, anybody else on yet? Besides like you and I? I? Mm-hmm. I, don't I don't know. know. Hello? You suppose everybody else got, got knocked off? off? Maybe. Maybe. They can't, can't none of them get back, back in. in. I don't know. <laughs> hey, it, it sounds sound like, like a echo on the call. On the call. It it's what? what? There's, There's an, an echo. echo. Terrible. Oh, yeah. We've been, been hearing, hearing each other too. <laughs> Not, Not sure where y'all went. Uh, um, um, that that, that uh, uh, Santos, Santos video, video I was out on, on YouTube. YouTube. 
There's, there's two, two of them. them. There's, there's one, one that's, that's only about 13, 13 minutes, minutes. Uh-huh. and there's, there's another, another one that's, that's three. three. Yeah. You were the, sh- the short one is called Christ in, in You. The 30-minute 30 30 is the sacred spirit of the Christ, Christ within. within. And, and, and you've, you've got to watch. watch. They're, They're really, really phenomenal. phenomenal. Do you think, think there's, there's any way we'll be able to know if we can stop the reverberation before we do that? I'm sorry, say that again. Would you think it'll do it when we're watching the movie? Or, okay, now it doesn't sound like it's doing it. It's reverberation. Uh, Sure, I think anything is possible, and everyone is different. I just just thought it would be kind of hard to hear the video if it was reverberating everything we said, but I think it just went away. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Now Did you guys hear any of that recording? No. No. Not at no. all. No. We, oh, my we God. Thought, that's weird. We, we thought you got obviously, off. Yeah. Well, I heard somebody talking, and I was letting you listen to it. So it came on, and I tried to unmute or mute, and it wouldn't do nothing, so I'd hang up and call back in again. Yeah, we mm-hmm. thought you fell off. We didn't even know there was anything playing. Oh. We couldn't hear anything. Okay. So where did I? Where did we end? You were you talking about doing that video, and then you just went away, and then it got really quiet, and then we two of us started talking and asking if anybody else was on. So oh. did we talk, but there was a reverberation of everything we said while you were gone. Weird. Okay. Well, this is an important part for somebody, I guess. So should I play it now? Yeah, try it, yeah. Okay, everybody mute out, star six, and if you don't hear it, somebody come on and talk real loud so I can hear you while the phone's to the speaker, okay? Okay. Thanks. Okay, hold on one second, guys. Let me get it started. I'm still setting it up. We've reached it by different avenues. i got to set it up, you guys. Well, President Obama or President George Bush, I still do. Okay, but, hold you know, on back further. I was just. We we sit back. Okay, can you hear me? Somebody, can you hear me? Star six for a minute. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's going to go on for two minutes, and then we'll get to the nine eleven thing, and then it's important. Here we go. Which is the law of one, period. And the dark forces, a couple of years ago, I've got the exact date somewhere, but I can't remember it right now. The dark forces signed the law of one. And the reason they signed the law of one is the law of one itself. And when they did that, all previous agreements and contracts and oaths with any sorcerer or magician, priest, whatever, from the past was healed. It was transmuted and transformed to be only the highest good of all concerned. Wow. In other words, all the old win-lose, us-them, you know, whack them if they don't agree with you, paradigms, um, lost their oomph because oomph comes from the elemental forces. Can you hear it, guys? I'm just being paranoid now. Can you hear it? Somebody say, yes, yeah, we hear it. Okay, good. So this is funny because I started at a different spot last time. I guess you're apparently supposed to hear it from the spot I started this time. Okay, here we go. And 
what I'm saying is, is that every single thing in creation, of whatever sort it may be, has been charged with, impregnated with the law of one, and has wholeheartedly signed up for it. I mean, how can you not sign up for the highest good of all concern when you know you're one of them, you're one of the ones concerned, and you're signing up for your highest good? There's no resistance to that. But to me, it is the cerebral concession of what love is. Love, to me, is common sense. And the reason it's common sense is the cause of all of one. It's just that it works better than anything else. Plants grow faster. The food has more nutrition. Children are happier. Animals uh, are more compatible. Your body is healthier. It just all works better with love. Music is more beautiful. It just works better with love. You know, whether you're loving the shoes that you put on your feet and blessing them and giving thanks for them, or whether you're charging all the crystals for 50 miles in all directions, or whether you're just loving yourself instead of criticizing yourself. It just works better. And that I call common sense. It's just common sense to do that, which works well. Marianne, I'm going to turn it over to you. Our time is pretty... I know that we can possibly go on longer. I'll leave that up to you and the other people. If y'all want to go on longer, I'll stay on. But Marianne, I'll let you call the shots here. So back to you, girl. Uh, it, it is getting late. I'll open it up, though, for uh, people to thank you um, or even to comment. But um, just a quick note here. Uh, I, I say the law one quite a few times throughout the day, and it, it just seems like it's running in the back, and it just has helped to make so much. It, it, it's helped to make my life smooth and, and my relationships smooth. So, um, And I've seen it with other people, with my friends, and uh, my friend's surgery went well. My Allie's life has totally changed around. And uh, a, a lot of other of my friends, their lives have changed, and, and for the better. And, I mean, it's, it has just smoothed their lives out and, and, and made, it, made it more happy, happier. And that's definitely what it's all about. And so um, thank you, Cynthia, for just keep bringing it through and, and telling people and, of course, people are using it now, of course. But I'm going to open the line up uh, for people to, to say thank you and to uh, have any comments. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up, but if anybody wants to um, come on and just say, uh, it was a great night. Come on in. I have thank two you. more thank encouraging you. comments. Oh, go ahead. No, go I'll ahead. wait, I'll wait. Okay. Is that okay, Marianne? Cynthia? Uh, go ahead. Go this ahead. Yeah. I just want to say thank you, Cynthia, for a fantastic call. Marianne and Carol, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, two quick comments. Uh, one, I just this is very important. I'm now even just tonight. I'm seeing the significance. How important? Okay. So when 9/11 happened, I I never get up and turn on the TV in the morning before I go to work. But I did that morning, 
I saw the plane go in the second building. I I was not awake then. I loved President Obama or President George Bush. I still do, but you know, he, I was deceived then. I thought he was a Christian, gonna do good, blah blah blah. Little to find out. Anyway, the strange thing happened to me. You know, I love all the people that died because of this, but the strangest thing happened to me. I got a great big smile on my face, and I felt joy. It was like now I can now that what I know what I know. It must have been my higher self that knows that you can see in a broader way knew that was something. What I thought then was this is a start of something. I mean, it's, it, I felt, in, this is what I felt. I said to myself, it's finally here. It's happening. I didn't know what. I had no clue for what we know today. Oh, my God. So that's what that smile was because of, you know, the world changes now. And somehow 9-11 is going to turn out good for all. I'm, I, anyway, we talked about it that night. And then the other thing, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Just wrap it up, but go ahead. Yeah, and then the go ahead. I just, the other thing, President Obama went to Stonehenge just recently. I wanted to ask Cynthia what she thought about the sign of that. And then real quick, just encourage everybody, three years ago, a Christian man, uh, very powerful in prayer and fasting, young man, went to Stonehenge with his intercessors. He was training. They were praying there. Uh, you know, his third eye opened up, and they broke, you know, what, okay, long story short, Stonehenge was used spiritually to control the financial, treasonous financial system by the bad guys all around the world. And what they did that day is they opened it up to reverse uh, the treasonous financial system because the spiritual curse or whatever you want to say went all the way up through the sun and other galaxies. Well, that got broken that day three years ago, and other people have done it too. But ever since then, the financial treason system has been falling, and now President Obama goes there. Wow, what a sign of wonder to me. But I just want to ask Cynthia real quick, what is she, does she see anything out of that? Thank you so much for being patient. I'm going to have to tune into it. Let me just do that real quick here. I call on the living flame of divine love and universal consciousness to be here now, and I'm asking what, if any, messages there are about Stonehenge and President Obama going there. Let's see what I get. Well, I see underneath Stonehenge a large red five-pointed star in the earth, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet below it, but the star itself is probably 30 feet. And then there, and then above Stonehenge. See what I have to deal with when I ask these questions and see interpretation. And above Stonehenge, I see two lines going up to a neon blue side pointed star. So and I see him there in the stones. Let me ask what the message is. Hold on. I'm asking what is the message that's the highest good of all concern? And they're saying it is a sign that it is the time in the rhythms and cycles of life for man to become enlightened, regardless of what path he or she has taken to reach this point. And I'm just getting this huge influx of energy that has many, many messages in it, but for the purpose of this discussion, 
as far as how I would personally interpret it, would go to mean forgiveness, unconditional, unilateral, infinite forgiveness and gratitude. That we can uh, quickly complete and end the past through gratitude and forgiveness so that we can all be washed clean uh, in the law of one, all of their laws being overridden by the law of one, and be born together as the one being who is the many into the omega, The Alpha is the original divine blueprints of creation. And the Omega is those original divine blueprints of creation manifesting fully in creation. And if what all these channel messages are saying are true, then we're the last stone to be turned. Um... But then I've heard other things like from Sheldon Lytle tonight that imply that no, we're not the last stone to be uh, turned into the light. We're going to be the ones t- turning the stones. Who knows? The beauty of it is when you're a child, every day is full of wonder and magic. And the scriptures say, You must be as little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I believe that the kingdom of heaven on the uh, axis of time and space is an exercise like a Fibonacci spiral thing or like a kaleidoscope of infinite joy and wonder and beauty like you would experience as the pure, innocent, healed, happy child. And I know uh, from everything I've studied about youth and immortality that being in that psychological set of being the eternally young, youthful, energetic, and happy safe, healed child is how to manipulate the glands of the human body to stay eternally young and useful. So each and every one of us, as far as what I can see going on, is going to go through whatever healing we need to go through in whatever way we need to go through it for us to be reborn into our trust and innocence, into the uh, clarity and perfect purity of our true divinity, as pure beings made in the image and likeness of God who are here to experience creation in joy. There's just these little gems that have been left to us with all the manipulation and and hiding that's gone on with who we really are and what reality really is. That thing in the Bible where it says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, not the fear of anything, not financial fear, not aging or sickness fear, not any kind of fear. I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of joy and life everlasting. So on that note, um... I will say that that was a symbol of whatever it is that Obama represents. And he represents different things to different people. But whatever it is that he represents, 
going to Stonehenge, which is their version of the antiquities. There are photographs that may or may not be real. It could be disinformation. A Stonehenge being erected in the 50s. And I haven't gotten to the bottom of it. But whether it is the true ancient holy place that we have been told it is, or whether it's a false flag, one of the earlier ones, regardless, his going there with what I saw with the five-pointed star below and above and the message that I got is that irregardless of the different meanings that different people will apply to that act, that it is actually a symbol to both camps, to all the camps, that it is time for human beings to become enlightened. So that's my answer. Cynthia? Oh, my God, you guys. I just want to bring this in really quick. Did you hear that answer? All through this call so far, I have been, the emotion of crying <laughs> has come up. Every, a lot of the stuff, this call. That means healing more in myself. Wow. So I'm sure you guys have experienced that. There's just crying and it's joy too because the, tr- uh, the crying is part, there's truth coming out. Not even the words I hear, it's, it's a deeper thing. It's a deeper thing. But what Cynthia just said, is exactly the way of coming, the healing, the rest of the healing. And by the way, I want to remind you, while at the same time, this is synchronicities, this is not by accident, at the same time I asked Cynthia this question right before I thought to ask Cynthia a question, I was talking to a friend on Facebook, and she was talking about Obama and Stonehenge and what did we think it was. She was face messaging me back and forth, and so I told her live that I'm asking somebody on a call I met at that question and she's looking into it and she goes she teased me like yeah right real it was, it was real you heard it but let me tell you I'm going to do a blog of this what Cynthia just alluded to about Stonehenge Obama whether it's a false flag or not it is a sign uh, I'm going to do, I'll do a blog on that I'm going to do a blog on this chronal mass ejections of the sun with the ET ships but Okay, that, this happened on Wednesday night, what, I just, what you just heard and when I was just talking to my friend on Facebook. Two days later, yesterday, last night, I was on Facebook again and another gal friended me and we were talking and I went over to do what I always do. I put them a picture of their di- a diamond on their, uh, their homepage and I say, I diamond you. <laughs> and I put the diamonds blog. Anyway, I went over to her homepage and lo and behold, what did I see? very top of her homepage, the first three posts were about what? Stonehenge. And one of them, I didn't open them up all the way. They're, they're talking, one of them has somebody researched that there is actually either a city or, you know, a living space, a living something going, something in below Stonehenge, a city below Stonehenge and more. So that's not by accident. I'm going to put that on the blog. Um, wow, you guys, this is phenomenal so far. What do you think? Any thoughts for any of that? I think there are no accidents. Did somebody say something? I did. I said, I think there are no accidents. I think that you were getting, that it was coming at you when I think that all of this stuff is coming at us for whatever reason, and we may not be understanding it yet, but thank heavens there are people out there that can help us. But this stuff isn't coming by accident. We're, everybody is awakening or moving in a direction where we need to be for whatever we are going to be doing. Absolutely. And we're learning that today. Are you guys all excited yet? Have I got you excited yet about where we really are? You got my body calmed down. (laughs) 
that's a blessing. <laughs> wow. Now, I know this is a marathon call, so again, if you can't listen to it all, I'm going to keep going because we got the... I very much think that we're in these calls, these last two or three calls aren't by accident. We're preparing ourselves. And i got to get this in about the, the energy wave now we've built the foundation. Whew, man, I'm shivering. My whole body is. I'm like, whoa. I was, I was earlier. My whole body was shivering, shaking, and fear <laughs> then. The, uh, the uh, meditation, yeah, my body wouldn't put still. Oh, my God, you guys. It's rocking and rolling in my DNA today. Yours, too, I know. Oh, my God. And this, and I'll be able to put this call on YouTube, so and we're going to get it out. Hopefully, Joe can really get this uploaded on YouTube. This is important for humanity. And Elizabeth? So, yes. Uh, I'd like to recommend a book by okay. David Wilcox. Yes. The the synchronicity key. Yes. There's a lot of this stuff in there. Really? You read it then, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm almost finished. <laughs> oh, my God. I wanted to read it, but yeah, really. So, wow. It helps yeah, you then? Yeah, well, the the ending part is really the past few chapters were, uh, well, he, he talks a lot about this stuff. Uh, uh, 9-11, he spreads things right out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I'd like to recommend that to everybody. It's a big, big, fat book, but it's good. And where did you go to get it? Um, I think Amazon. Yeah. It's called The Synchronicity Key or Synchronicity Key? The. And David Wilcock. Or you can go to Divine Cosmos. Right. I think you can get it from, from there. And I'm not sure if I did that. <laughs> I've had yeah, them for it. a couple of, uh, well, I, I've got the two books that he has out, and uh, I just finished the other one, and that's also a big one. So I've had them for quite a while. I actually remember when you told on a, on a conference call that you got those co- books. Oh, and did I? you started reading them. Yeah, see, I remember details like that. Isn't that odd? No, oh, good for you. <laughs> that was like th- two years ago or so. Oh, no. I, mean, I don't know. I don't think it was that long. Or one year, maybe? It's well, time go goes fast. fast. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. What's the name of the other book? I forgot. Oh, wait a minute. I have to... <laughs> I don't know what I did with he it. He actually said... He actually he wrote, wrote the synchronicity key after this book she's going to tell you, but he says... If you get it now, to read the book, synchronous, the Synchronicity Key book first before the other one she's going to tell us. Yeah, I would do that because the other one is very scientific and I had a hard time getting through it. I I kind of understood, but I mean, I'm not a, ooh, a lot of physics in there. Yeah. Yeah, so it was, um, I can't find it and I don't know why That's I don't okay. remember the name of it. It'll come up. Well, th- here's an example. Those two books you read, and now you understand some of it. We're mm-hmm. going to a we're going to a space just around the corner where, boom, that one book will the stuff the concepts in that those two books, boom, downloaded in our brain in seconds. Oh and yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. I and think we'll understand it. Oh yeah, I def- I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just can't find that darn book. <laughs> You'll find it. Don't worry about it. If you, if you oh, don't. I will. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll have to let you know next week. Uh, listen, I'm having a little problem, and I wonder if anybody uh, has the same problems. I have, I have a lot of music in my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we? I, or maybe you're hearing the five to eight hertz frequency I've been playing all through the call. It's very light. It's the frequency of love. This is why we're feeling this way, you guys. Oh my God, we've had three hours of that. Well, well, I hear it's uh, the first song I got was uh, Ave Maria, and it went on for oh. like an hour. Are you serious, Beverly? Oh my God! Yeah, that's I awesome. really yes, I really am. Oh my uh, goodness, that's awesome. weird. 
<laughs> no, you're not weird. Uh, do, are you hearing it audibly? Is it in the distance or what? It's in my head, and it sounds like it's in the distance a little. So, And this was 2 o'clock in the morning while I stay up late. And I went outside because I thought one of the neighbors might have had a radio on. <laughs> but no, there was nobody had any lights on, and it was still in my head. And then I get red sails in the sunset and wait till the sun shines, Nellie, and love me tender. I only have eyes for you. Uh, Mayor oh. for the beautiful gums a lot. Oh, and my God. The blue bird of happiness. Oh, holy night. White cliffs of Dover. That's a song from the World War II. Oh, what, how does that go? What are some of the words for that one you just uh. said? There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover tomorrow. Just you wait and see. Oh my God! Are you? Oh, Beverly, oh, thank you. over. Oh, there'll be love and laughter and peace ever after. <laughs> And then I got, oh, come all ye faithful, and it's 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, I am so overjoyed right now. Wow. Uh, but does any? I don't understand it. Does anybody else have? I told my doctor I hesitated because I thought she'd send me off to the loony bin. <laughs> but uh, she said that's because you're, you're, I'm having a problem with my left ear. And it's in my left ear that I hear it, so sometimes I'm going deaf in it, you know? Oh, but so, you're not. That's what they're trying to say to you, and they, that's what they understand. What you actually are doing is your DNA is turning on, and you're tuning in, because you are a radio, you're tuning in to different dimensions and different... Uh, and music is very, very healing, and it was meant to be. And it's to, it, music increases your vibrations and uh, your DNA. So you are yeah, changing, I also, girl. I also had a couple of songs that were being sung by a female chorus. What were those? I, d I couldn't recognize them. They were very wow. pretty, but I did not recognize them. Well, you, you, before you go to bed, you ask out loud to yourself, what are the names of those songs? I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, there's so many. So, well, and then last, last night, no, I think I woke up this morning with happy birthday. I don't even know whose birthday. It's not mine. It's all of ours, silly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, see, the doctor's explanation didn't make any sense. Because if I'm going deaf on the outside, why am I hearing music on the inside? <laughs> You know, that doesn't make sense. So nobody else is having this. I'm sure there are other people that are having this. There are other people that are having experiences that we haven't had in a long time. Like I had these x-ray visions, and I I heard some things, and there's uh, the calls have been on. There's There's people experiencing lots of stuff like that, and everybody's experiences are different. But I'm sure there's other people hearing music. Which, oh, my God, Bev, that is astounding. That is awesome. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear your opinion because I didn't, I just thought, I didn't know what was going on. Don't be scared. Just keep receiving it. And pretty soon you're going to be tuning into other beings and other dimensions, and then you can talk with them and converse with them. Oh. When Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're ready. I know. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> and like I talked about at the beginning of the call, you know, that our calls are going to go to that. We're like our whole groups we're going to be on and be talking with other beings and we'll be teaching ourselves and the beings too, each other. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's off. what I keep reading. You yeah, reading keep, that too? I'm reading it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think in David's book even. Absolutely. Yeah, he talks about that, too. You're rocking me out of my socks, Beverly. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. You be happy about it and be, give thanks to it. So give thanks and appreciate it, and it's going to even come stronger and more glory. Well, oh, here's the other book. It's sitting on the table. It's the Source Field Investigations. Investigations. The Thanks. Source Field 
investigations. Yes, thank you. It's a lot of good science in there. He gives a lot of, uh, well, you'd have to read it. I mean, you, you can't not believe it. He he gives so many uh, references wow. and what have you, you know. So uh, he even talks about uh, Project Paperclip and, you know, things like that. He talks about all the stuff in these books. They're really very, very good. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that on. Does anybody else want to encourage Bev and what she's experiencing? <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Wonderful. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. I, I'm, it's, it's another little facet. She's got her facet, and it's really, I think it's great. Uh, oh, like thank you. Something. Yeah, it's, there's something going on there, and I think that one thing you might do, what we all need to continue to do, and many years ago I learned that if we have the question, we're supposed to say, if we have the question, we have the answer, even though I'm going to ask one question because I haven't got an answer because we don't always get them, but we start getting the answers for ourselves. So if you ask why that song, why did you pick that song to start playing in your head? What did you need to learn from that? What's coming from that? Yeah, because there's a lot of America the Beautiful that comes in. Well, and you're um, you're picking music. You're you're coming forth to music. Um, I'm doing everybody, that. Everybody comes, I think, different, but there is messages coming through those music to you. So, oh, well, I'll have to work on that then. Thank you so much. Uh huh. Oh. Wow. That's a good point. Yes. Hmm. Um, I could, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Lily? Are you there, Lily? Maybe she left the phone for a little bit. She's there. Wow. Okay. All That's, right. I'm going to mute out. <laughs> thank you, Bev. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right, guys, on to the next venture. This is Franco Di Nicolo now talking about the energy wave. Uh, you want to hear it? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Elizabeth? Yes? Can you hear me? Yes. I wanted to say, uh, Bev, all those songs seem to be about love. Love? Or, uh, love and kind of like, I'll see you soon. Yeah, like we're we're coming back to our natural supernatural state. We're here. Mm-hmm. You, you go over a ridge, and the World War Two song sounded like, you know, wanting come to come closer. Someone soon, kind of. You're far away now. Oh, can you hear better? Better. Um, like uh, about love and um. The World World Two songs seem to be like, I'll see you soon, you know, uh, watch for me. In some of the songs, it seemed. Yes. That's awesome. Oh, my God. I'm going to soak in that Beverly testimony all day. Wow. That's great. Okay, so... uh You ready, guys? We're on a marathon. This can record for six hours. What is quarter to six already, you guys? Oh, my God. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going on five hours. Woo! Okay, let me start. Uh, I'm just going to play, try to play some excerpts. I'm not going to play the whole thing just to get the gist of the wave. Uh Uh-huh. And what do you think? And then I could play more next week because we've got one more week. That'll be one day before the wave comes in. Yeah, that's that's cool too because we we have to go away here shortly, and I wanted to hear it, so we'll, we'll maybe can hear some of it too next week. Yeah, and and if you uh, can't hear this whole call, as soon as we hang up, it's available via phone. You know, you okay. can call the recorded okay. line. You know that, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, or the link will be online. Okay. Um, okay. Let me let me hook it up to this. Uh, 
to access the work that we're going to be doing. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. as long as there's because something bad is going to happen to me, then of course that's the ego getting involved. And to the degree that is of absolute service to you for the next day, step that you're moving forward, nothing will be done. I'm uh, trying to get to the point where that uh, you know a lot of times if I miss this out, then you know, for truth at all times and. And that the work is going to be done the way it needs to be done, and we'll be evolving at our own pace. Um, even if we're not listening to this event, or wearing the energy stickers, or doing all this stuff, I mean, we're still going to be. Okay, they're talking about the event. They're going to have an event, uh, Di Ni Franco Di Nicolo, and going to attend via webcast. And if there's enough uh, fan for fair for it, if you can't attend. The computer, I could, I could attend and play it on the phone through the Diamonds line. We could record it on September 21st. Uh, Franco is going to do activations and healing stuff, and talk about the wave more. And also on September 21st, Teal Swan is going to talk about how to meditate, and there's all kinds of stuff going on. And then Franco will be doing another uh, event in Canada, where he lives on October 19th. So that's what they're talking about. And I'm going to try to choose, ask specifically of the energies of the wave. Let's get it to there. And that's all on the blog, advertised on the blog. I put that there. Everybody's on their path. And for, right? I mean, there's no there's no wrong that can be done. It's what I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's the thing is, you know, we don't... The one thing is we have a tendency to be caught up with, you know, I need to do this, 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 and this for, for you know, for me to make it or to be able to get to the next level. Um, you know, the the thing is, like you said, the, the whatever you need, when you need it, how you need it, just put in those words, uh, it's going to play out. Now, if you need to be involved with a certain uh, process or a certain step or a certain stage of something that's going on with yourself, you're going to feel guided, directed to, to do so. It doesn't matter how much the mind may resist it or may have fear, whatever you need to do. Because even the fear itself is a is a process to discover, you know, old programs that are there. Because that's what you need. Mm -hmm. I mean, any emotional component coming up, including fear, requires a story. There's a program behind it. So without that program, it's, it, does, it doesn't exist. Because our natural state does not is not fear-based. Uh, it does not, because our natural state knows its source itself. It knows that it's here and it's designed all of it. It knows that it's, you know, orchestrating every single facet of this experience. It is here to, you know, be a part of the adventure, to be through this discovery process. It's here to to use the the human experience to, to really take, uh, you know, a, a, a beautiful ride, if you want to call it that, in in uh, in a way of play that uh, that brings the opportunity to enhance itself, right? So each time it comes here, you know, even though a lot of the souls, the majority of the souls, uh, may find it heavy, uh, and when I say that, it's just because of the veils and all the uh, imprints that may have taken forth along the way. Uh -huh. But it's still behind the scene, behind the core essence. So there's that that brilliant essence within it even though it may be able to not be able to access it completely in that moment, is always there, which is the knowing of all existence, the essence of all of it. Of They're talking about the energies of the wave coming forth now in September. Sources, sourceness itself, it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. So um, regardless, it's, uh, that part of it is always the part that is the driving illumination and so forth. It doesn't matter how far you go down the road. In any level of incarnation, level of, you know, projection as a hologram or whatever, on planets beyond planets and whatever role is played, whatever imprints it's going, it can actually reset anything and just be back into its source pristine state without going through whatever it's going through. So there's never a fear of, you know, getting lost in it or, you know, uh, being abandoned or going into this limbo or anything else, you know, none of that. A lot, there's a lot of talk of that stuff, but... It was also, most of it comes from the fact of the polarity world, of, you know, <clears throat> make it, don't make it, right or wrong, good or bad, and you know, all of that stuff that, uh, you know, we've played in with the past. So, in essence, it's just streaming 
further part of that until you get to the point is you actually you, you you crack it open and you see that beautiful brilliance that you are and it's like oh all is good and I'm mm-hmm. not going to regenerate myself back into the natural play state that I am and I'm going to play full full throttle here and I'm going to do whatever you need to do uh, but yeah. you know it's it's not you know we're not coming here for a punishment we're not coming here for a karmic essence we're not here because we're stuck we're not here because we got thrown here we're not here against our will you know the mind may think so we may have different uh, opinions and perceptions and belief systems because of you know all the different experiences we may have had but that's kind of just creates the the two sides of it and the, the all-knowing and the the side that has, you know, uh, is using uh, past experiences as a reference point. But in essence, you learn and grow and expand within that uh, con- uh, that uh, that energy, that state of being, and so forth. So it's it's mm-hmm. perfect regardless how you look at it. Now, the the thing that you were saying earlier, you know, with with why this this these waves are coming through. Or the, because this has been coming through for a long time now, you know, and, and we just get right. different versions of it, different states of it, it's, and it's different activation. It's not there to, you know, uh, create more intensity, but it does reflect that way in many cases. And uh, the intensity is really a powerful energetic urging that takes place. And especially if we're still in a 3D uh, program basis, whenever there's that powerful change or wave that pushes us, it really brings to the surface a lot of the old stories, programs, and so forth, or even past lives, or anything else that you know we've adopted or defined ourselves by, or you know created uh, layers of imprints within ourselves that we've carried uh, through uh, what we can call somewhat of an unconscious state, which was was perfectly in a state. And when I say unconscious, this is is when it was created and then you experience it on an unaware unaware state. You know, I created this playground, but not realizing that I created the, the play, playground and the purpose behind the playground. So now I'm responding on a conditioned base. So in essence, when you're coming into that type of state, you're you're not aware that this is your playground, and you mm-hmm. may see it so real, so intense, so powerful that in in essence, when you're in it, it's like uh, such a powerful realism and <laughs> disconnect in a, in a sense that uh, you don't see anything outside of that and you see that as your essence of who you are but that's only at a certain level and that creates part of the experience mm-hmm. and you know it's just part of the whole process that we put ourselves in and the process is not like we put ourselves through because it has to be difficult. It just looks that way, right? So when the intensities come along, when the next wave comes along, wherever that wave may be, uh, it just brings it up to the surface so that we could actually go in and see it more clearly, play with it more, get more in depth in it, dive into it and whatever else, uh, achieve whatever we wanted to achieve as an experience to learn from and expand and grow, and then just dissolve it. Now, of course, if the programs are very deep, when you get hit by these waves, guess what? I mean, it's going to feel, you know, the end of the world sort of thing, in a sense, within ourselves, because of the, the, the mind itself doesn't know how to cope with it, and it's bringing up a lot at the same time. It's like, for example, you're, you're having a particular experience, and say you're having a troubling time. So I'm just going to use that as an analogy at this time. You're, you're going through some, some challenges, say, at work or something, and you're just really not feeling good about the work and whatever is going. And then certain sequences of things, events uh, take place that actually make it much more intense, much more confirming in a way, but in a, in a way it actually activates in the fact of you're not being good enough for this particular job or that you know uh, people are acting this way or whatever to create certain intensities within yourself, and then what happens to trigger things, whatever you are already experienced seems even much more intense, much more what we can call worse, if you, if you want to use it in a terminology that, that we've defined on a human level. But in actual fact, all you've done is actually accentuated uh, 
part of what you were feeling and part of what you were ignoring so that you can actually have it, you know, illuminate it and, and be right there in it so that you can actually go for the full ride. Because, we, you know, through any changes we go through, it's not about just uh, coasting through it. You know, a lot of times we believe that, you know, we just got to make it through, right? And it's not really making through anything. It's about us going full throttle through the, the experience. It's not, you know, playing it halfway or quarter way or safe, or, you know, the concept that we have, this idea of safe, you know. It's, it's about really jumping into it. And, if, you know, once you get to realize more and more who you truly are and more and more able to access that, the stuff that we've put up as safety or the, the stuff that we've put up as a belief system or even practices or, you know, the way we've been playing it to stay in a safe zone that we don't challenge ourselves doesn't become a factor any longer. So you would be, you know, like you've probably seen people that, you know, don't seem to almost have no fear in, you know, bungee jumping, jumping out of airplanes, uh, doing you know, what some people will call high risk, like uh, power skating or skiing, whatever you want to call it, you know, doing acrobatic things that, you know, have the potentiality that looks like on the surface having something intense and somebody go, oh, no, no, I would never do that because it's, you know, too afraid. But they, they're, that part of their life is they're going full throttle and they're basically, you know, pushing it to the max because they really want to go for the thrill or whatever the ride. But in other parts of their lives, it may not be because they may be reserved or, you know, not able to, to play another part. But in that, that part, the component there is. But eventually what happens is, you know, we're, we're in that way. It's not like we're going into uh, an experiential junkie type of thing. But if you're going to create something, let's put it this way. If I'm going to create this event, I'm going to create this experience, this, I'm going to take on this role, I'm going to really jump into it and play it full out and really get the full capacity of, of experience and learning and growing from it and discovery of self through that. And then at the same time, when you're at full throttle, you not only accentuate the full experience, you get the whole spectrum of that experience. So that means you don't leave anything behind and say, well, I'm not going to touch this, but I'm going to touch that. or I'm going to dive into this fully, but I'm not. You dive in through the whole thing. And by doing so, when you're doing that whole experience fully and completely, you, they just basically create such a, a powerful shift within yourself, then more of, of it will uh, open up for yourself, but you're also bringing a higher aspect of yourself into it, and you become the driver much more proficiently, much more powerfully, where you know, you're always a driver, but you're unaware of the driver, but you, you, you let the programs drive, but now you go into the driver's seat fully, and you start to navigate through every part and facet of your experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what really uh, occurs in that regard. So this is what you're, you know, we're choosing to do. So these waves are basically right now is to each one is per particularly tuned for the next stage that we are preparing. None of these waves come in against what we desire, okay? Now, if a soul does not want to participate then it can choose to be out of that experience because it will not be part of it. Or it may choose to leave the planet. There's different avenues. But in regards, anyone that is part and parcel of it has agreed to go through it. And the degree it goes through it will depend on their state of frequency, their desire of what they need to address next, it is, you know, it's, it's made up of their own uh, at soul, a superconscious state of what would be the next readiness that they're ready to dive into, sort of thing, if you want to put it in those words. So, in essence, uh, each one is there to stimulate, because remember, we are going through this powerful transformation on planet Earth, and humanity is going through this transformation, mind, body, and soul. It's on all levels. But it's also in the outside world that is reflected or, you know, that is being reflected from us or projected from us at this point. Uh, all of it is going through a transformation. It's all an upgrade. So with any upgrade, you know, you need to complete whatever, you know, does not, uh, or let's put it this way, whatever that we have not completed, 
because part of it is all perfect that you need to, okay, this, I need to go through this before I go to the next thing. So these waves are just basically as, uh, facilitating one way or another, and we've agreed to be part of it. Now, this one that's coming on the 21st is, you know, I, just another wave that's coming through. Now, it just happens to be that this wave aligns up when it is because, you know, we say there's time, but there is no time. It's just a sequence of alignment and a readiness of the souls on a collective scale. Now, the souls itself are being prepared along the way and has been being prepared for the last 26 plus years um, for this wave. Of course, when we enter the end of 2012, of course, we started activating these new sequences within ourselves and, you know, the planet's going through the process of transformation. We are going through it. And it doesn't matter what 3D world that we're living in in a mind level. It doesn't matter how we're lost, if we want to call it that, lost in the experience. But we're not lost in the experience. We're basically ingrained into the experience. We're basically right in the depth of that experience. Even though it's reflective of 3D, regardless how deep we are in it, we are at, uh, at the super conscious state, the soul level, saying, okay, we're going to go into the depth of it. However, there's always that part of you, as much as you may not be conscious of it, that is fully aware of what's going on and is also communicating, is being partly co-creating the next wave. So each wave is from each and every soul's agreement to be part of it and to put its spin on it or to put its part in it and say, okay, this is how we're going to go for it. Even if the mind turns around and says, oh, my God, this is going to be too much, or whatever the fear would be, the soul says, no, that's okay, because we're, we're here to, to really bring it to a level where it actually uh, you know, alters the way we process things, it alters the way we perceive things, because that's how we're going to create the change within ourselves. We need to have all of that come into play. So we're saying, okay, great, this is what we're going to participate in. So the fact that you're on the planet... And we're going into the 21st of September, which is where the next wave comes in. Uh, we've all agreed to, to be part of that, and we're all going to be affected one way or another. And when I say affected, it's not outside of us. It's we've agreed to be stimulated, to agreed to go through whatever is necessary and beneficial for us to take us to the next level. So regardless, that's what it is. Now, it being back to the timing sequence aspect of it, it is. It just happens to all the pieces, all the combination, the mathematical combinations, and so forth. The, the all the uh, energetic alignments and all the the codes are are being um, put in from all different uh, spectrums of of input are now coming to the point of saying, okay, the next next activation comes through. Now this particular wave because of the level of readiness in one degree and the level of, and I don't want to say urgency because, you know, that's the word, the lack of a better word at the moment, but a lack of, you know, we're ready for the next stage. It doesn't matter how much we feel at the mind level or how much programs we're carrying, that the next next level needs to, to be activated for us to get on this path even further because we have all agreed to go through this transformation. So the next wave will come in very strongly to kind of get us off the stuck state, off the fence, whatever you want to call it. I mean, not that we really were stuck in the, on the fence because we've made a lot of decisions already to go through it, but it's actually a, purging, a pushing and purging from the old stuff, but pushing us to, to the next level regardless, you know, how we've, you know, dug their heels into the, the, the ground and saying, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I can't move because I'm paralyzed at the moment because I'm not sure which way to go. It's, it's really to push that part of it. So in essence, this particular wave, the, the, the one thing that it's going to um, provide is that in it, it's anyone that's at a higher vibration where they've already done a lot of work and are ready for the next wave to come in energetically to support them to move much more quickly, much more efficiently, much more expanded, will be able to kind of ride that wave and it will feel more natural, feel much more comfortable in a sense of feel like, ah, okay, there's movement. And there's going to be, I use this again as a word, uh, lack of better words, like a relief in a way um, because it's like, 
Oh, energetically, I'm feeling supported. And when I say supported, it's more of aligned or alignment with the mm-hmm. particular energy that we may be on. Okay? It's not supportive like it needs to, you know, I need to, because a lot of people feel that when we need to be supported, it's like somebody has to be there and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you can do it, you can do it, or, you know, feel that, oh, I'm there for you, or something like that. That's a mind, ego, just a programming way of it, which is nothing wrong with it, but in a, in a way, that's kind of the old modality and program. But mm-hmm. supportive meaning that the energies actually feel so much in alignment that you actually blossom. You know, it's like you you, you flourish and you will be able to actually, um, whatever is playing out with you that's still remaining, you'll be able to see it much more clearly. It's like all of a sudden the light gets turned on and, uh, oh, look at that. I can, I can see more of the stuff in my, in my environment or my experience around. And you're not going to look at it and say, oh, my God, look at this mess I have and, or look how terrible this is. It's like, oh, I can see it. Now I can address it. I can play play with it. I can clean it up. I can do whatever I want to do with it because I can now see it much more clearly. But it's not only seeing it clearly. It's also having to be able to uh, have the, what can I say, not the tools, but the, the, the capacity, capability to say, oh, I know exactly how to handle this and how to actually utilize it fully. And right. you'll have all that you require to, to move through it. So all of that is coming through. Now, the did you hear what he said blossoming and we've heard some testimonies of blossoming today on this call <clears throat> we'll continue this one next week with more details of that wave <clears throat> I'm going to play like five more minutes of uh, the preparation call for the wave that they, they talked more detail to in a little different way and uh, let me see here Lily, are you there? We'll play the I'm rest here. of that next I'm week. I'm here. Are you guys, are you kind of understanding what he's saying? Oh, absolutely. Okay. A <clears throat> little bit more. This is the pre-call for their event on September 21st. And uh, Dr. James, you'll hear Dr. James Fu talking about the energy is coming in. And then Franco, it's probably, let's just play like 10 minutes of it. I'll try to get it set up. Here we go because tonight is a preview call for the Riding the Wave event, which is a two-part energetic event that we're hosting here um, up in Cambridge at the Wonder Center at Cambridge, and it's taking place um, coming up September 21st and also on, uh, on October the 19th. It's a two-part event specifically um, to assist all... To, this is all of us, those that are attending and not, because, of course, as those that are attending are doing the work, it's, it also expands out to all those that can't be there. It's a two-part energetic event to assist with the new energies, the new wave of energies that are coming in starting September 21st. And uh, they're pretty powerful. Um, it's called the mover and shakers. They're to assist uh, humanity to clean up the past. And I know that some, some people have in comments, and myself as well, that you may have been experiencing emotions or things come up that you thought probably you dealt with. And there's a, there's a lot of um, anger, sadness, you know, all this stuff coming up, anxiety for a lot of people. And that's part of these frequencies that are coming in to assist us to clear that up. So that because of that, we are hosting um, a, two, a two-part event, September 21st and October 19th, uh, to assist you first to clear up as much as possible when the energies come in. And then, in, and then the second part, which is the October part, is to help you ground. And both days you can attend here live at, at the Wonder Center in Cambridge which is about 30 minutes just north of Toronto or 30 minutes from the airport if you're flying in, or you can also attend via live stream. So those are the two options. And we encourage you to be with us. And that's what we're here for, right, Franco and James? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So why don't we talk a little bit about um, the 
energies of September the 21st. Okay, let, let, me, let me start off then. Mm-hmm. Because this is a question a lot of people already ask me. What's coming? Okay. So from middle of July to end of August, you find there's a lot of changes within you. The energy is now coming. It's actually collecting all the little islands of, of the emotions that you have. And also not only emotions, it, it, it's your desire too. Now, if you, if you think, think back just, just a month ago, then usually it's moved around in August. Things that you think you already under control and put it aside, they become a little island everywhere. Now the, this energy coming in August is really collect them and put them in the big bucket. So if you have sadness before and you think you get over it, you don't like your boss, you don't like your job, because you get used to it. Now, even this energy in August is really waking you guys up. It collects them all in one big bucket called the sadness. So if you have that, good. At least you know what, what's happening to you. Now, on the other hand, if you have good stuff that you have some project or some desire that you want to do, but you have bits and pieces of information everywhere, in the last August, it actually focuses you. The energy actually assists you to focus. You seem to know where you're moving now. Now, that's two parts now. If you have bad feelings, they put in big bucket. You really feel sad. You feel really feel vulnerable. And on, that, on the other hand, if you have decided to move somewhere, they are helping you to do that too. So they collect them in the big bucket. Now, so what happened on September 21st? If you call September 21st now, if you, if you think of sadness, you will see how sad you will be. So actually starting from September 21st, the energy actually coming, what we should call the booster. It doesn't care what you have. If you are sad, it puts you up even sadder. And that's the problem. Right? Now, so what we would like to see is happening is to help you to release those sadness, those bad emotions, get rid of them now, or at least minimize, to, to try to clean up that bucket as, as much as we can. Now, unfortunately, this boosting energy is coming in now, the strongest from September 21st, and this energy not only lasts for three months, actually is coming for the, the next 15 years. Right? So be careful. So the best thing you can do is get rid of all your sadness and concentrate on your and the future. Okay? And that's what we hope to do. You know, the September twenty first and then October the nineteenth. We have you to get through this hump. Okay? Right now I pass the ball to, to uh Franco. He will he will do more than I do. Well, I think you covered it pretty well there. Yeah, that's why we call it riding the wave, right? Yes. Yeah. If, if, you, if you have some, some good intention, that intention will enlarge to a point that's really... If you're feeling happy now, wait until September 21st, you will really feel you can you, you fly. Everything... <laughs> I don't know if you heard him really good, but he said he was saying if you're feeling sad now and if you've been going in through august sad sad feelings and you keep in those sad feelings they don't go through them now come september 21st you think you feel sad now it's going to bring sadness more on so you can work through those healing modalities but he said if you're feeling happy and uh you know august was to focus you in on what you're going to run with and you're feeling happy and you think you're feeling happy now. Wait till September 21st comes. You're going to feel happier. Oh, wow. So uh, this is a nutshell what uh, James Fu just said. And this is why they're having this, um, this activation presentation on September 21st to help us even prepare more. So 
um, maybe if, since I'm listening to it, maybe I'll come on the Diamonds call and let everybody listen that can't can't come on computer and the phone. So let's hear Franco five or ten minutes, and then we'll be done for today, and we can list full, fully next week. Whew, I'm getting drunk, you guys, in the Holy Ghost, I say. I hope you heard James. Here goes Franco. We think we we positive. Yeah, thanks for the boost. Uh, the thing is, too, if, if we have uh, great intentions, we have some great plans, or, and we're looking at heading a certain direction with our lives and uh, holding that energy, the, the one thing that still comes up comes to come point first or even already what it is and it's going to just really intensify if still if there's anything that may be a, as an obstacle or a fear or a concern or uh, a, an old story program and so forth that you may have uh, that will still so you'll you'll have part of you will lift up and see that the possibilities are there and it feels very strongly but then the opposite will be also uh, accentuated also where you see the the heaviness uh, or whatever that you still have that, uh, like James Sue was saying, that needs to get rid of uh, or clear the bucket is <clears throat> going to also be activated. So you'll have both. So, so you can actually be having both parts of it activated. So the, it's still very key uh, to let go and let go of all these old emotions, old programs and so forth that, you know, keep us in the old um, – pattern of thought, the old ways of, of responding, where we feel that our emotions have to drive us, where we still are very attached to um, the old energies, the old ways of life, the, the uh, you know, relationships, you name it, whatever it is. By the way, at the same time, we're going to be experiencing it individually in our relationships and our family. The outside world, you know, is going to be experiencing the same thing. We'll see it, too. You know, disclosure maybe, more disclosure, more shocking of the disclosure and the deceit we've been in. At the same time, goodness coming out, uh, you know, I don't know, it'll be this time, but, you know, uh, finding out about the IRS and how treason it is and the canceled taxes, going back on the gold-silver standard. I believe these energies, the energies coming September 21st will support that at some time sooner than later, right, guys? So those have been following that. Look forward to that, too. Okay, let's listen in five, ten minutes. So so that when you catch that wave, you, uh, you're basically going to not have to have to deal with both. You only deal with the one. Now, the whole purpose of September 21st is to, <clears throat> when these things come up, is to deal with all the things that are going to be the obstacles, every, everything that's going to be accentuated. Like, like James was saying, you're going to get, you know, if you have sadness, depression, fear, or anything of that nature, it's going to be accentuated. So, you, so that's the part that, you know, the work is going to be done on, and in, in is to clear that, to raise the vibration, and then be able to ride with the energies that are coming in that are supporting us. So this is the beauty about this is because it's there to uplift us but at the same time, it's going to accentuate anything that's there only for the purpose for us to clear it, only for the purpose for us to let it go so that we can actually ride the, the uplifting wave, the, the higher energy, so we can start creating a new experience in, uh, in our own personal lives and start to align with the, um, the new consciousness that, that has been installed in us that is also expanding where we start to create a whole complete new world, where, uh, you know, the changes that we are choosing feel deep in our own essence that we want to flourish and uh, take place on the planet and take place in our own lives to actually start having that come through. And the energies will carry us. And not only that, it would also support us because all the alignments will start to come into place. And the reason that it's going to, you know, the, the first wave of it is pretty intense, that it's going to go for the three months, uh, but like James was saying, it's going to carry on for 15 years because there's a, a huge uplifting, a huge build, rebuilding, a huge restructuring that will take place. I mean, our intent is to totally transform our human experience, totally transform our planet with with these uh, this energy. And it's there 
to support us. You know, I know sometimes people, you know, respond to fear, oh, my God, am I going to be ready for this? Well, you know, the thing is, if you want to not have the, the massive polarity or really get hit on one side or the other, then, you know, let's do the work together. But even if you don't get it, you know, and, and you get hit by it, you always have the opportunity to shift it. It just becomes so uh, noticeable, so intense that if you want to hold on to it, it's not going to be something that's going to be very comfortable or possible to do so for any long period of time because during that 15, uh, period, 15 year, uh, sorry, uh, three month period, it's just going to continue to, to uh, erode and erode and erode to the sense that you have to let go of your old world. It is also going to push certain people that are really not feeling like they want to be on the planet. And when I say that, I'm not talking about on an emotional side because the emotional side plays a role, but it's all deeper inside at the soul level where they feel that they're totally stuck. It's going to help you uh, accelerate whatever process that you need to do to complete whatever you can complete and then make the exit. So there's a lot of different things that, you know, this is there to play. This is nothing to be afraid of. Um, it is all there to benefit and assist us, and it's just really a, a helping hand, but it's like a kick in the ass too at the same time, depending on where you're coming from in your state of, uh, of experience. So uh, what we are doing on September 21st is to facilitate, to connect with these energies, to allow all that needs to be cleared, whatever needs to be let go, released, uh, create a shifting within ourselves, and then we're going to uh, address also a any particular challenges that are, are taking place in your lives. And there's a lot of process that we're going to be doing between James and myself. We're each going to be doing various uh, activation, energetic activations, and transformational uh, processes uh, to facilitate, to help. Now, this is not only for the people that are participating because everything that we're going to do, we're also creating a template for the planet so that anyone that can uh, link up to that, even if they're not ready right at that time, they have access to it. Like we're creating um, uh, an access channel, if you want to call it that, with the template of, of that transformation. And we will we'll implant it throughout the whole planet. And that will be available for everybody. Now, the participants that they are personally uh, in person uh, and the people that will be connecting online and whenever they do connect will be facilitating, will be working together to make this possible. But then at the same time, we're also addressing the personal. Now, when we do address the personal, we're also affecting the, the family dynamics because as you're going through this process, because you're linked to the family dynamics, you will also create a wave change within themselves. So even though they may go into the depth of something um, intense because of some of the baggage that they're still holding on to, the old energies that they're holding on to, um, you, will, you being part of it at this point in time will have the opportunity to just in your presence and the, uh, the linkage lineage that, and the linkage that you have with them at that level will just just you being in that, that state will actually create an opening for them to choose. Now, it's still up to them what they want to do, but it, it creates a, um, the opportunity for them to, to be able to access it, where, you know, in, in most cases, it is a little more difficult when you have to access it from a global perspective rather than access it in a family uh, connection. So even if the family is on the other side of the world, you're still, you're still connected. Now, of course, we're all connected, so everybody's affected in that way. However, the, the first uh, lineage of uh, family are the first one that uh, catch because there's a lot of DNA matching and, and so forth. Um, and so the, the, the so September 21st is to assist on that part. So it's a, it's a key one, and it will very... Um, it would be very powerful for uh, everyone that uh, will participate. And uh, I know that uh, James usually doesn't get too excited about uh, certain uh, changes of energy that are coming through, but this one, uh, James was, uh, was uh, pre-read uh, about this coming through uh, to the point uh, you know, he has taken actions to uh, work with people, and we've already done a retreat to, to create some openings and to create a shifting and also raising the vibration to 528. And 
uh, again, you know, this is something that we are doing together to, to make sure that we facilitate as many people as possible, but also facilitate the planet, too. The October 19th will be a, a further boost. There will be a, a, any required maintenance of the frequency that needs to be done. Any adjustment will address other particular challenges that may pay, uh, prevent itself and will create, again, transformational energy activations that uh, James will be doing, and there's also going to be uh, alignments and activations that uh, I will do, be doing also. Again, it will just facilitate. So it's, you know, we're going to ride the wave, but, you know, if you get shaky on the wave, there basically it's going to stabilize you even further and to be able to, to ride it even more efficiently. So that's what the, the 19th. Um, so this... The, the two events came up uh, while we were doing the actual retreat, we, the, the, the October the 19th, so that when we did the, uh, the retreat in July, it came very clear that we had to do something on the 19th, and then later on it presented that we needed to do something on the 21st, and this is why this is coming together. So um, this is kind of the platform that we're working with, and we've decided to hold it at the uh, oneness of Kingbridge uh, for the facility because we're creating, uh, and creating the energy there. Whew, okay. I think that's enough. Wow, we're loaded, loaded potatoes today. Whew. Okay, any comments? We've got good preparation today, and next week we'll finish that preparation and we'll be ready for it. It's very uh, interesting. I have one really quick question, if I may ask, and I'm going to make this really short, but if there's anyone that can answer this, last night with everything else that was going on, I was dreaming a lot too, and I'm not going to go into the dream. I'm just going to ask this. And at one point, I was taking the dinar and the dong away from my husband, and I just threw it. He said, don't the wall lat and I threw it straight up in the air. And when I threw it straight up in the air, you know how things fall from like heaven and they come from a higher up when you throw something up in the air you can only throw it so high uh -huh. because it's just not gonna go any higher than that. And the reason that I'm asking is because when I threw it up, it was like it came from so high up when it came and it just came down like lots of money floating down. And then my two grandkids were there, and they're going, they just started laughing when I did that. And so they're just grabbing and picking it up as fast as they can pick it all up because here's Grandma, she just went kind of off and threw this money up in the air, and they're picking it up. But the big thing was, you know, you can pick up so much. He only had so much in his billfold of it. You know, there's just so much of it. That was it. You just can't get any more in there. But when it came down, when I threw it up and it came down, it was just like it was just raining money. That's what I saw. What wow. Is Are you on speakerphone? No. Oh, you sound kind of far away a little bit. Oh, I have. Maybe my my it, headphone maybe isn't. Um, is that better? Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, it's been uh -huh. really plaguing me, and I thought maybe somebody, that's what I was saying to that lady, we asked the question if, to answer when we have dreams and stuff, but I was not getting any answer to this. So when you threw it up, what did you say to your husband? I didn't hear what you said. Well, I really didn't say anything to him. I was angry at him at that moment. Oh. And so I took it out of his billfold and, I, and, 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 and took it, However, when I told him this morning, he was just laughing about it. He said, this is like, oh, you've got to be joking. I said, I know. I was just having these weird dreams and everything last night. And yet, because it was just really weird, totally out of character dream, and I don't even remember dreams that well, but to remember this one, there was a lot more to it than that. But the big thing that really blew me away was the fact that when I put, there's only so much you can put in a billfold. And when I threw yes. that just threw it up in the air, and I have no idea why I did that. It just, it went way high. It was like it just coming down from heaven, and there was a lot of money. It was like floating down and just 
Like somebody took, went up and stood on a building and just dumped a yeah. lot. It was more than you could consume. It was plenty. You're filled up. Your vat is filled up and overflowing. So what I get out of intuition, because dreams are symbolism for the person that, and the fact that you're on this call, because here's what I got out of it when you're saying, this is the nutshell theme of the call today that turned out. I didn't know what it, the theme was going to turn, but the theme was what you were doing is actually letting go. Letting go of it, and like Andrew said way back at the beginning of the call, you know, yes, there will be value, and you know it is, but you don't have to keep watching it and watching it. Let it go. It will happen when it happens. And so what you did is you let it go. You said, okay, and look what happened. You let it go. You uh, gave it to the universe, and the universe even produced more prosperity, so to speak. I'm talking prosperity for you for spiritual mind, body, and soul. Yeah, Isn't that, that beautiful? It makes, yes, that makes a lot of sense. Yes, that does make really good sense. Thank you. Because it So I'm excited because, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're letting go of that, but you're not really letting go. You're letting go. You let, it, let go and let God. But you're, when, haven't you ever heard this um, saying kind of thing? Uh, oh, it's a poster I had when I was a teenager. When you love something... Uh, let it go or something like that and it'll come back to you if it comes back it's yours if it didn't it wasn't yours anyway yeah something like that but you let it go you had the faith you took the leap of faith to let it go you know let go of watching it intently like I did like probably four five six some months ago or more Uh, and you know it's a part of the picture, but it's only one piece of the puzzle. You know the whole right. pieces. There's more than one, that piece now. You know it's all about even you. Yeah. And it's going to come back even more prosperous than you ever, ever imagined. More so that you can't even, you don't even really need it anymore because it came back to you overflowing. You, you can't even pick it all up. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to give it away. It did. It came back overflowing. It was amazing. The kids were laughing. And I, and it was just his. It was really crazy, too, because it was just his grandkids that were there that were picking it up. I have no idea why, because I've got three, too, also. But it was just the craziest thing. That only The only people that were there was his two grandkids, me and him, and that picture and that scenario. And Let- they were down there laughing, picking all this money up that I'd thrown up in the air like a crazy lady. Let me tell you what I know about dreams. Dreams, the dream world, when we're sleeping and dreaming, that's a real world. And in a nutshell, when we we dream something, that's where we start creating it. We dream it, and then we create it, and it manifests in this awake world right now. So, oh, my Mm -hmm. God. Not just for you, for everyone. Yeah. You're 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 the microcosm showing the macrocosm what's going on. And... And and that's funny, you dreamed that just last night right before this call, and then you come on this call, and that theme plays over for you again. It's encouraging you. It's a synchronicity. Oh, my God, I'm excited. Yeah, that's very, very good. Thank you. Yes, I've been having a lot of that. It doesn't take in 24 hours anymore for a turnaround for answers. And Mm -hmm. it's less than 24 hours. So, yeah, that's really good. Thank you. that, That makes sense to me. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Does anybody else get anything when she was saying that? It's a star six. Let me shake so the room's open. It is. I just closed it. Hold on. Oh, there. Are you there too, Lily? Hanging in there with me? I'm here. I'm here. What do you think? I know you got some intuition, some thoughts. Ooh, I really liked everything he had to say. And did you just hear our sister come in with her dream she had? Did you miss that one? Yes, yes. Um, Oh, my God, Lily. She dreamed basically the dinar and the dong, and she's upset with her husband. She took all the dinar and dong and threw it up in the air, and it went way, way higher. It came all the way down. It came down, and her grandchildren saw it. We're laughing and Gilgan. They're all picking it up. They couldn't even pick it all up. It was so abundant. So I just explained to her what I thought was uh, the theme of the call: let go and let God. Let go. It's yeah, part of the was... story. It's a piece. Yeah. Yeah, that's really spot on. 
Mm-hmm. Anybody else have any questions? I think I will. Let's see. What's the 21st land on? A Sunday? I thought it was a Thursday, but I could be wrong. Look. Next Saturday it's is the 20th. Sunday. It's a Sunday. Yeah. So next Saturday is the 20th. We'll finish listening to the details of the wave uh, from Franco and if anybody else comes up in the between then. And then the next day is the event they're going to have where he's going to do activations, him and James Fu, and just helping us really just, you know, get in that happy state because you heard James Fu saying this energy is strong. It's not going to, nobody's going to be able to run from it. So if you're in a happy state, you're going to get happier. And if you're going to, and you're in that sad and poor me state, you're going to, it's going to accentuate. Any emotion is going to accentuate to help you uh, heal and clean out. And then uh, the happiness thing would just help you boost you to start more running on your race of what you're helping humanity with. And it's all multidimensional, more of that to that. So I think I'll do the diamonds thing. So if you can't hear it by computer, you can come on the diamonds thing. Don't let me forget to announce that next Saturday. I know everybody's like full, full of uh, good vibrations. We got filled up today. There's, we told you we're sponges. Now we got to go ring out. <laughs> very good. Very very good. So, anybody else want to come on anything? I'm going to go to a buffet now. Chinese buffet. <laughs> There's a sign in wonder for you. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get your little fortune cookie. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read that now. Now that you said that, wait till mm-hmm. you hear what I have to say about that next week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get your fortune cookie. We eat lots of Chinese. Yeah, just to about letting go. Hmm? I bet it'll say something about letting go. <laughs> Anybody else have a guess? Maybe they'll have the numbers 11 on it or 911. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just blown away myself. I'm still shaking inside my whole body. Whew. And Beverly with them songs. Oh, my God. And others. I'm going to have to listen to this again. It's going to get uploaded on YouTube, you guys, so I can do some tube chops of it, chop it into pieces of revelation to pass around the world. And uh, and you can hear it in its entirety now when we hang up. And this, 640, this is the longest call Diamonds has ever done. It's reference number 164, 467. Oh, my God. What does 164 add up to? One and six. Eleven. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh. There you go. Oh, wow. Lord. <laughs> That's very. Wow. That's a wow. And it's going for six hours. Well, a little short of six hours. Six is a good number. It's a... Woo, 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 woo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody on the call that's going to listen to it afterwards and everybody in the galaxy, brothers, sisters, Palladians on the observation ship that I have a camera on. (laughs) You guys have had such a treat today too. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lily, for being on so long and everybody... And uh, I know you. it's like we did lots of bonding. We don't want to hang up. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're all hungry. Let's go eat. Yeah, let's go eat, and we'll all be there in spirit, huh? Right. So the recorded line is 209-255-1099, pin 883267-POUND. A reference number, you can just push the pound sign if it's the last call. Reference number 164 pound. Diamonds with an S forever, 31.blogspot.com for your world changes keep up during the week. 
I'll see you guys back here on Saturday, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where we'll finish up preparation on the way for September 21st and the booster October 19th and beyond. And then Sunday, we will attend the activations with Franco and really be spongy then. <laughs> so, uh, Have a good weekend. You guys, too. Let me stop the recording, make sure we have it on record. Don't hang up yet. So I want to just say blessings of love, peace, and joy, turning to bliss. We're not just stopping at joy, or bliss, for that fact. Amen. Amen. <laughs>